Got it. Another good one. Oh, wow. Got it. This might be a six pounder. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Check us out, man. Today's episode is sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. Thank you so much to those guys for hooking us up with some brand new Guggen Squad mini filthy frogs as well as the new mini zinger, y'all. We are getting ready to toss these things, showcase a little bit of tips, tricks, and techniques with the latest baits to the market as far as the Guggen Squad baits go. These are a new smaller two inch size of the traditional filthy frog, which is normally a two and a half inch frog. So we've got a little bit of a finessier size frog to get more bites. It's perfect for today because we've got a lot of thick grass. We might be able to get some blow ups. And if not, we'll break out some other baits and kind of just showcase some of our favorite summer lures that are going to work for you guys. We're going to actually be on the kayaks today. It has been a while since we've broken out the old towns. We've got one right here for Devin. And then we got this guy right here. He's just kind of chilling. Yeah, uh, kudos to me for forgetting the motors. So when you have these autopilots, the whole benefit is that you've got a trolling motor, you got spot lock, the whole nine. Today, we're just gonna be paddling it out because I left them at home. We are a ways away. And so we're gonna go ahead and launch these things, get in the water, showcase some of these, tie them on. Let's go ahead and get right into it, y'all. Thank you, Carl's Bait and Tackle. Here we go, y'all. Looking like a dream. Got him. Nice. First one right on the grass edge, y'all. Exactly what we were thinking. They're just over here in some deeper water. Nice, man. First fish of the day. Uh, that will do it. I bet you there's a bunch of them right here. There's going to be a lot of bass right here. This is sick. Let's go. I'm just kind of hitting the edge now, not really punching as much as just kind of pitching around the edges. Alright y'all, I definitely want to do some more punching here in a minute, but it's time to break out the brand newest, the latest and greatest, the mini filthy frogs. I'm going to go with something with a lighter belly, just to uh, just because the water's clear and that's kind of my preference. So we're going to go with the bone color right here. First time throwing the mini filthy frogs on the channel, potentially the first time you guys have really seen them in use because they are very new. A lot of creators are talking about them right now, but I haven't seen too many videos just yet, so... Here we go. And I'm gonna do just like I do the larger ones. I'm gonna chop the legs down just a little bit. It usually helps me walk the frog and I will uh, showcase how to do that here in a second. I'm throwing this on a go-to rod, 50 pound braid. Cause we are fishing some thick stuff here. You gotta have that braid that floats, but then also the strength to get through this grass if a big one pulls you down into it. This thing is looking so good. For me since, oh, there we go. Oh, he missed it. He didn't have it. That might have been a bluegill. Potentially was not a bass, but there we go. First bites already. So if y'all want to walk a frog too, by the way, it's just like little rod pops, little rod pops. But as you're popping it, you're also reeling, okay? And so what you really got to work out is how fast you need to reel with those pops because you, you want to pop it nice and consistent. And of course, you can give it that break every once in a while, right? And when I say every once in a while, some people just do a few pops and they pause. Some people like to really just keep it walking and maybe the occasional pause. That's entirely up to you and uh, how the fish are acting that day. If they're real active, just keep on popping it. If you feel like you need to get it right on that grass edge and leave it sitting and let those ripples really spread out, those water ripples, those vibrations that are going to bring those fish in from down a little bit lower or just bring them in from a little further away, then give it a few pauses. It's really all up to you but when you do pop it like this to get that walk you're gonna want that rod tip right down close to the water surface and you're just pulling straight back against that line but the idea is once you get that walk going you're just kind of pulling on the slack and it pops the other direction so really again the only thing you need to kind of master is not necessarily the popping cadence but how quickly you need to be reeling so sometimes it's a lot slower than you think and that's gonna get you the good walk out of your frog so just keep that in mind and uh, you'll be walking like a pro in no time it's a ton of fun learning this technique and being able to use a frog that you can now keep in the strike zone a lot longer because with every pop he's not coming straight at you he's just working nice and slow so you can hit those open areas in between lily pads and uh, grass mats like for much longer because you're working that frog in the strike zone and you will get more hits oh no a little bluegill i think again man the little fish are going for it you will get more hits definitely in the thicker cover where you're not going to be using that popping frog which is geared more towards like open water and the 
waters uh, and grass edges similar to this, you can get these filthy frogs, and specifically this mini filthy frog, in some crazy little nook and cranny areas and entice a lot of bites. You see, I'm going to be getting fish of all shapes and sizes bite today just because this is that smaller size. You're going to have more action. It's going to be a ton of fun throwing top water this summer. If you guys want to grab some of these, link is down below, shopcrawls.com. Let's keep throwing this thing. I got to link up with a fish on it. Got good one, good one. There we go. Good one, Devin. That's what I'm talking about. Just switch back over to the flipping jig. This is a big one, guys. There we go. Come on, hitting those grass edges. This is a good fish. This might be a six pounder. He's hooked good. Let's just get him up in the boat. Devin, this is a football. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is why you punch right there, y'all. Right in the thick stuff. Oh my goodness. Just as we were talking about, this is why we had to break it out. Holy smokes. That's easily five pounds. So fat. Y'all, it has been a while since I have caught a good fish. Look at that plump beauty right there. Shorter and a smaller mouth than I had initially thought when pulling her out of the water, but so fat. Oh I mean, God. plump. So there's no doubt this thing's going for four and a half. I'm thinking it could go five and a half to six though, just because of really how thick it is. We're going to get the scale out. Five ten, y'all. So just over a five and a half pounder. Holy smokes. It's been a minute. Y'all can hate me all you want for catching small fish lately. We just got a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Holy smokes. Look at this right here. So glad to decide actually sending it today because y'all, we were pretty discouraged when we forgot the trolling motors. I'm like, oh man, the whole point in the autopilots. All right, y'all, let's get this behemoth back in the water. <laughs> Crystal clear water. She is cruising. How cool is that? Let's get some more y'all flipping jigs and many frogs. We need the motors and then we need an ounce and a half weights and flipping hooks. Look, it's going right through. Just down, 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 just bottom. Oh my gosh, catching fish like this. Big top water blow up behind me. Y'all, these fish seem to be wanting to come up and eat top water, but this frog is not bringing every one of these fish through the grass. I see little ones chasing it. I'm going to try something different. We're going to go with the buzz bait because I think today the conditions are kind of leaning towards it more. There's definitely fish that are willing to hit top water. We're seeing blow ups all around this spot, but we're not catching too many on the frog. There's a nice little chop on the surface thanks to some wind, and I'm thinking maybe that frog is just not loud enough to get those bass attention. But what I did notice is the last couple times I kind of burned the frog back in over spots I thought were not like that good looking. What happened is actually bass were chasing it on those casts. So I think they're a little bit more active than working that frog slowly. And maybe the sound from this buzz bait is gonna really get them enticed to bite. So let's see if that theory is true. Bluegill and bass right below me. This is crazy. Go! Oh, just had a blow up. Just had a blow up. He's like a pound and a half. Look at him. Look at him. He might go after it again. He might go after it again. He's gonna hit it. He's gonna hit it. He's gonna hit it. He's on it. He's on it. Watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna bring it in from over here. He's gonna hit it. Watch this. Oh my gosh. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. Oh my gosh, this is like a two pounder. He's just hanging out right here. This fish is like right below us. What is going on? He does not even care about the kayak. Watch this jig, watch this jig, watch this jig. Eat it, eat it, eat it. You're gonna go down after it? He's looking at it, he's contemplating. Oh, I think I lost him. Well, I gave up on him. He's like still right below the kayak. He'd hit probably like a jerk bait or something. I'm just, I'm good. Ooh, ooh. That was a bluegill. Dude, they just come out of nowhere though. They come out of nowhere. That bass just came out of nowhere and ate the buzz bait. All right, so we're not wrong. We're just throwing in open water. The frog, I guess, wasn't quite loud enough. Quick release, that's fine. Look, we're getting the bass riled up. Now there's more below the boat. Oh my gosh. 
That big one still hasn't decided to make the move yet, but he's looking at it every cast. Dang it, you lazy bass. There we go. <laughs> Finally. Finally. These guys are hungry. My first fish of the day. Get out. Get out of these fish dig. This grass is so thick everywhere. Hold on, dude. I gotta get you unhooked and get you gone. It's right where I wanna cast. Oh, got him. Buzz bait. <laughs> right in the open water. Nice. He's got the length of a tube, but he's pretty skinny. Ambitious youngster, half ounce. Buzz bait, though, top of the mouth hook set. Exactly what you want on the Hummer, man. There you go, Carl's Bait and Tackle. They got you hooked up with all this. Everything you see here and more, you can get at today's sponsor's website. Whoo, that was cool. And as we're on the hunt for new fish, y'all, you can save 10 bucks on your first order of 25 or more with code Weston10. Do not forget about it, Devin's hooked up. It looks like she's got a rod bender out there. I don't know what's going on, but this one could be a decent fish. Oh, I saw that guy eat it, and this is a nice fish. My biggest one of the day so far, maybe uh, two pounds, not that crazy big, but that was really cool. I saw him come out and devour that swimmer. That was actually caught on our new scorpion. Man, I am loving this new scorpion DC and it is putting in some work today. All right, bud, off to the races. There we go, got one. It's nice, nice, probably a pound and three quarters or so. Here's what I'll say, y'all. If there wasn't this breeze and this slight windy chop today, the mini filthy frog is what I would be throwing. But since there's this breeze, I want something a little bit louder like this buzz bait. I think all these fish that have been hitting this buzz bait would hit the frog on a day where it's a little bit more calm. That's why you gotta have multiple different topwaters in your arsenal. When it is a little bit choppier, maybe you go with something like the revolver, the Hummer, but then whenever you've got some calmer conditions, and it, it always varies, you just gotta see what the fish are in the mood for that day. I'm sure we could catch some on a poppin' frog today, like a poppin' filthy, but I wanted to showcase those mini filthy frogs. So, with that being said, keep those in your arsenal. Ton of topwater blowups. We did get some hits, but it was mainly in that calm pocket, so you see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> guy my dude first one on that buzz bait right at the boat he decided he was gonna have lunch all right back in the water you go bye there we go got one on the mini filthy it's a little guy i think all right there we are Mini filthy frog, first catch in the books. Let's get some more, bigger hopefully. <laughs> Come here, bud. Come here. I knew you were on there. Then you went to the grass. And you're still in the grass. Yeah, you weren't going nowhere, sir. You were not going anywhere. All right, I am on the miniature fish bite today. Another good one. Oh wow. This one's really good actually after he started. Ooh, he felt that jig. Wow. All the big ones on the flipping jig today, guys. This is another good one. Oh my gosh. Might have another five. Oop, got some top water hits over here going on too, y'all. I'd say that's probably at four pounds just because of how fat it is. Oh my goodness. Nice sized fish out here, y'all. Holy smokes. Carl's bait and tackle for that jig right there. Three quarter ounce little bandito bug on the back. It's looking torn up now. I'm gonna have to re-rig that. Let's get you back in the water. 
I'll see you next time. A lot of top water hits we're seeing, y'all. But as I just released that second big bass, I'm finding the bigger bass are really loving this jig. It's a big old three quarter ounce, large skirt, full bandito bug on the back. I mean, it's a big presentation, kind of mimics the bluegill that are hanging out near all these grass patches, but at the same time, they seem to be suspended a little higher. So it's almost like if a bluegill were to dive a little too deep, those big bass are going in for them. And that's what this jig kind of represents is maybe just like a dying bluegill or an injured bluegill and he's kind of fallen to the depths and it seems like a lot of those smaller bass are suspended and hanging out a little higher but the big ones are down deep in the shadows it seems and when you get down there with this jig they just want to smack it so i'm going to continue throwing this we're getting close to wrapping things up we don't have too much more time out here but what a day throwing the new mini filthy frog On the drop, I saw that bass looking at it. I just didn't think he was gonna go for it because it was a little guy. I think that might be it for us today, y'all. What an episode. We'll catch you back at the truck to wrap things up. See you, buddy. Thanks for the fun. Look at that dive, dude. He just ran straight into the... That was sick right there. Holy smokes. All right, we're off to go grab some lunch with friends, y'all. We'll catch you at the truck. All right, y'all got the kayaks loaded up. Thank you, Carl's Bait and Tackle, for sponsoring today's episode. If y'all would like to use any of the baits, any of the gear we threw in today's episode, go ahead and check it out, shopcarls.com. Um, you gotta get yourself some of those jigs. You gotta grab some of the new mini filthy frogs before they sell out in your favorite color. Glad we could break out the kayaks for you today. Devin caught a bunch and uh, it was an absolute blast. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Hold on guys, I gotta say, uh -oh. I don't know what's going on, but I am off my game and today it was Weston's day to get on the bigs. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> well y'all imagine that. So sometimes you gotta share, I guess. But anyways, we'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.